they worship false gods, idols. And I, I looked up as I was doing my study. I looked up. I was, I was reading the Old Testament, the study of Balaam. He was a prophet from Mesopotamia, and what his downfall was the fact that he used God's talent for a different purpose. Balak was from the Moabites, Moab. and the Moabites come from the, the generation of, of Lot. They come from the um, ancestors of Lot. And the, the Israelites just came out of Israel. They, they defeated Israel. I mean, the Israelites came out of Egypt, and they um, and they defeated the Amorites. And in that, they they um, the Moabs was was less was didn't have as much people as they were with the Israelites. So he couldn't Balak couldn't defeat them. He was the, he was the king of Moab. However. He couldn't defeat him as far as the, by numbers, so he asked Balaam to curse the people of Israel. He, Balak was the enemy of Israel. So when he told Balaam, ba Balaam went to God, and God told him to do it, not to do it, not to go there. So the so he sent his servants. So he sent this. Um, so Balaam has sent the servants to talk to um, talk to. I mean, not Balaam. Ba Balaam went to talk to servant. Um, talk had his servants talk to Balaam about um, for, for his person God. And he offered him things, but at some point in the in the in the story, because if you read Numbers twenty two to twenty six, it, it, it go further in the story. Balaam started to compromise. Where he was going to do it, but then God turned that over. He turned it over. Where when he was going to curse God, there was the three times, and God ended up blessing Israel because God cannot lie. He's the same God today, yesterday, and forever. And in that, Israel was because Israel's God's chosen people, so he couldn't do that. But however, in the story, so they, that Balaam, Balaam got fed up with that. That every time that he's getting trying to get Balaam to go curse Israel, it would turn all around. It would turn around. The way it ended up being reversed. But it didn't happen. God started to bless Israel. He would start Balaam would start blessing Israel. So in that, the story is the fact that. Later on, they had the Moabites and the Midianites. They ended up use. They ended up the, um, seducing the men of Israel. So they ended up they, their hearts started to turn to other gods, and it led them to a life of fornication. So that made God upset. God was angry with the people. And and on the way of doing that, God had rebuked Balaam by a dunk. But the point I'm trying to make, though, is in the story is to us as saints, are we compromising with our relationship with Christ? <laughs> Think about it. I sat there. I sat you know, as I was doing my study, and I was sitting there and just examining myself. This is examining my life. We are not, as Christians, we are not supposed to fit in with the world. There is supposed to be a difference in the way we carry ourselves compared to how we carry ourselves in the world. If we blend in, there, there is a compromise. And God does not like any compromise. He wants people that are totally committed to him. We cannot compromise when it comes to the word of God. There must be a standard. The word of God is not a buffer thing when you pick and choose. You have to take it all in. 
You have one soul. We can't afford to lose this soul. The Bible says, what does the prophet did a man gain the world and yet you lose his soul? The Bible says in 2 Corinthians 5, 17, Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. All things are passed away. Behold, all things become new. There are things in life that, I mean, this, in Christ, everything's supposed to be new. How we walk, how we talk, how we dress. We cannot, how we act and carry ourselves. Not just in church, but outside the church. There should be a standard. There has to be a standard. Amen. There is no time for compromising when it comes to your relationship with God. The, your relationship with the Most High God, Christ Jesus, is the most important relationship you will ever have in your entire life. Because if your relationship with the Most High God is not right, Everything else, relationship with anyone else, will not be right. We have to be in a place in our lives where we have to stand for the word. But with the, with the downfall with Balaam was that he compromised. It shouldn't. He should have just been like told King, the king Balaam, "No, I'm not going to do that." And leave it at that. It shouldn't have been an option. And I want to tell you, it says that when it comes to dis disobeying the word of God, it shouldn't be an option. We have to stand on his word. We sit there and talk about we surrender all. But do we really surrender all? We have to be in a place where we are standing for Christ no matter what. The Bible says in Matthew 6, Matthew chapter 6, verse 32 to 33. For after all these things do the pagans seek. For your heavenly father knows that ye need all these things. But seek ye first the kingdom of God and all his righteousness. And all these things shall be added to you. God, God has everything. He owes everything. So it's, we don't have to compromise with anyone in order to get what we need. Amen. God will supply all your needs. Amen. We don't have to compromise. We All we have to do is stand on the word. As long as we're doing what we're supposed to do, Amen. God will, su will supply all our needs. Amen. We don't have to compromise when it comes to the word of God. I don't have to be a different way here and then be a different way outside of it. I should be the same either while I'm here or outside the doors of the four walls of the church. We don't, it's no time to compromise when it comes to the word of God. In James chapter 4, 4, ye adulterers and adulterers, know ye not that friendship with the world is an enemy with God, that whosoever therefore will be a friend of the world is an enemy of God. So if I'm compromising with the world, I'm making myself an enemy with the Most High God. Amen. He's not, if I'm making myself an enemy with the Most High God, he's not going to listen to my prayers. I mean, it's, it's an abomination. It says that in Proverbs, in Proverbs. But we have to be in a place where we're repenting. And we just need to find in our lives where are we at in our lives where we're compromising. Mm -hmm. And like I say, we always say before, get it right. Amen. Get it right. There is no time to compromise when it comes to this word of God. Amen. You have to stand. You're not supposed to be like the, the people of the world. You should be better because we have Christ. Amen. They are lost. But with Christ Jesus, we are found. Mm -hmm. It says in Ephesians 5, 11, Have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather reprove them. So we should have fellowship with anything that's against contrary to God's word. We should have we should have fellowship with anything that that God does not like. We should. It says the Bible says the fear of God is to hate evil. So we're supposed to hate evil. Whatever God hates, we're supposed to hate. Because our life is not our own, mm -hmm. but in Christ Jesus we live. Amen. I have to realize that my life is not my own, but I live for Christ, yes. and I'm gonna die for Christ. Amen. 
no matter what, I need to stand for him. If I'm not anything in the world, as long as I'm something in Christ, that's all that matters. And we have to be in a place to realize that as long as nothing else is going on in the world for us, as long as we're something in Christ, that's all that matters. Because these things are temporal. But Christ is eternal. And we have to be in that place where it's about our relationship with him and nothing else that matters. He called us the true holiness. He said to be holy because I am holy. Where's holy being set apart? We have to be in that place where we, we walk in true obedience to the word. In Galatians, 10, uh, Galatians 1 verse 10, where Paul said, For I do not persuade men or God, or do I seek to please men? For if I yet please men, I should not be a servant of Christ. So it's about being a servant of Christ. Our goal is to be a servant of Christ. It's not about pleasing men. Men will let you down. Men will, men will turn their backs on you. But Christ would never turn his back on you. He would never leave you. He would never forsake you. But you have to be in a place where you have to be totally committed to him. He wants people that are going to be with him no matter what. Do the good times. Do the bad times. God is still good. Yes. We have to realize that. That no matter what we go through, as long as we have Christ, that's all that matters. Mm -hmm. We have to just trust in him. And this whatever, regardless of what we go through, we have to give thanks. Because yeah. in this walk with Christ, it's not going to be easy. He told you it's not going to be easy. He said, do I do not come to bring peace with man, but a sword. Your father and mother told him, it says, I'm paraphrasing, but the, your enemy be the, the members of the, your own household. But you have to be in that place where it's about him. It's about your relationship with him. In 2 Corinthians chapter 7, verse 1, having therefore these promises, dearly beloved, let us cleanse ourselves from all filthiness of the flesh, and spirit, but perfecting holiness in the fear of God. Amen. So we're supposed to be holy and to fear Him. Fear meaning reverence. reverence. God is a holy God, and He has to be reverenced a certain way. So we have to be in that place where we reverence the Most High God in a certain place, a certain place, the way that He wants us to do. Not our own way, but the way that He wants to. And that's through His Word. He has, he's gave us this, the blueprint, which is the word of God. And we have to be in that place where we have to know his, what he wants by studying the word of God. Because we get one soul. And John 8 verse 13 says, and ye know the truth and the truth shall set you free. And the truth is in Christ Jesus and the truth will set you free. But we have to be in that place where. We want to, we can know the truth and accept the truth and live by the truth. It's one thing about knowing the truth, but are you going to live by the truth or are you of the truth? So we have to be in that place where it's about him. It's not about us anymore. It's not. It's not. It's nothing. We have to be different. I challenge you guys today. That what examine your lives, examine yourself, see where you're at in your life where you compromise, and try to get. I mean, not try, but get it right. Yeah. It's not no more time for compromising. It's not no more time of he's still working on me, but I need to get this right now because tomorrow's not promised to us. Yeah. The next hour is not promised to us. But if, if we refuse to leave the earth today, would you be in right standards with the Most High God? Would you? Is he pleased with your walk with him? Is he pleased with your relationship with him? Is he pleased with your relationship with, with your others? Would he, would he, is he, is he, would he be the person, would Christ be the one to be like, that's my good and faithful servant? Like, like happy 
in your as far as your relationship with him? Or is he or, I mean, I'm at a place in my life where I just don't want to be just an ordinary sermon. Amen. I don't want to just get by. I want to do it wholeheartedly. If I'm gonna serve God, I want to just do it all heart wholeheartedly. I don't want to just dabble in this and that or just make it in. I want to live right. So when I when the time that we got, I will be on great point. He was just like, welcome home. So yeah. Yeah. I don't want to be in that place where you just made it. But I mean, just making it is still better than the lake of fire. But still, the fact that I just don't want to be just an ordinary servant. Mm -hmm. We have to be in that place where we just don't want to just do the, the minimum. We have to be in that place where we just seek his face and just trust in him and live by him and just surrender it all to him. Yeah. You pray my strength. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. <laughs>